Hello YouTubers, this is Anubafar. The concept release of the Drake Kraken is a carrier ship from the barebones ship company called Drake. It's not the rumored portable service station, but it's pretty close. There's really no info on how to buy it or what the price is. I waited two days to collect more information on the sale itself, to which there was none. So let's break down the information I got so far. It's a pretty exciting concept because it's simply massive and offers so much potential to an org's operation. The Drake Kraken is a big, multi-level Drake ship that looks like a gigantic caterpillar with a flight deck stuck to the top. You can clearly see the Drake design language in the winglets, cockpit, landing gear, and the engines. That's pretty much where the similarities stop. It's a significant ship that once again grew up in concept. As a carrier, it can carry at least one Buccaneer-sized ship internally, and the concept art has a pair of landing pads for cutlass-sized ships and mini bays and pads for smaller ships. It has a listed crew requirement of 10, which is the minimum. I'd suggest that that's not including any flight crew. Looking at what the ship offers and what it takes to run, 10 is a ridiculous number. It has a massive cargo hold of 3792 SCM, which is similar to other cap ships. It's actually better than most cargo ships. It's 270 meters long, making it longer than an Idris and 104 meters wide, which is less than an Idris. The size and footprint variations are down to its shape. Both of those ships are within a margin of error to say comparable. It has manned and remote turrets all over, which seemed from the promo video to offer a wide set of interlocking arcs, broadside, and to the front. It's very reminiscent of pirate movies where ships are brought broadside to attack. And this is the first point that I'm going to bring up. The Idris M has a massive railgun, which is front firing. A cap ship battle would be all about positioning. Like the Drake Caterpillar, it's asymmetrical. And we have confirmation that the top parked ships would survive quantum travel if they were clamped down properly. For Q&A, it would be nice if someone asked whether or not a Cutlass could release and survive while in quantum. In the past, people who wanted to buy very large ships in very limited numbers needed to wear out their F5 key, quickly rush through the checkout, and then click first to buy. It was seen as unfair and frustrating. This launch has done something a little bit more like a lottery. To have the ability to buy it, or even to know its price, you need to present to Drake why you're worthy in a narrative. The best narratives will probably be sent an email and then you'd need to decide if you could even afford it. Two things to consider on this. All members of an org who wish to have one should enter a pitch. This would improve their chances of getting it. However, the practice of an org pooling its money together so that one member can buy the ship is a risky proposition. I've seen members come and go with org assets. It creates a crappy situation where in the best case money is exchanged and things are made right or a crappy situation where the money's never returned. So choose and consider what you're doing wisely. My hope is that the so-called golden ticket would come with a 24 or 48 hour grace period. Get your applications in to see if you're able to get one. All components are listed as capital class. I didn't focus very much on the stats page because they're known to change as the ship passes through the pipe. What is significant is eight size eight turrets that are manned, four size six turrets that are manned and four size five remote turrets. That's 16 turrets. There's a crew listed of 10, which shows me that they may expect us to automate some of the turrets. As I said before, you should consider the actual crew requirement much, much higher. The speeder bays, plus the internal bays, plus the external pads, plus the top pads, it's gonna be like 20 pilots and crew alone, plus the 16 turrets, plus the pilot, plus the bridge crew. The art has landing gear and the stats have a significant VTOL capability. So who's this ship for and what can we do with it? Even though we've had the Iteris and Javelin for years, we have a very basic idea of what it's for. We can only theorycraft and hope that we get what we want. The docking ports listed on the front port and front starboard side are exciting because it means that the devs intend to put docking back into the game. They're positioned far from the main hull, which would help a wide range of ship types to link up. I'd love to see being able to dock several Krakens together as a large base for a pirate orc. This type of base is actually something that would make sense based on their roving nature. I'll close out talking about the pledge price. Being Drake, some have said that it might be around $900 because they're known for being just good enough. It might lack the armor of an Aegis or RSI ship as Drake is not a military company. Some have said between $1,500 and $2,000 because it's a new ship and it's a cap ship. Given the nature of the sale, I wouldn't be shocked if CIG set the price high, hoping to fund the game a little bit more. So that's it. I'll continue to track this as it develops in videos like this or on the Facebook page where I often drop info bites as they come out. Thanks very much for spending your time with me. Please be sure to enter the My Radar sponsored contest with 20 winners totaling $2,500 of value. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.